Shalom, and welcome to another edition of The Truth Shall Make You Free. I'm your host, Brother Nathaniel, and to my right, Brother Barak Shaw. Let's open up with John 8, verse 32, as we always do, okay. and get the understanding on that, okay? John chapter 8, verse 32. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Go ahead, read on. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and we're never in bondage to any man. And we're never in bondage to any man. But what has happened now? Are we in bondage to man? Yes. We've been in the United States of America's grip for almost 400 years, brothers and sisters. Christ said, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. What is the truth? Knowing that you are the Israelites, that you are commanded by the Most High God to keep his laws, his statutes, his commandments. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 20. Because there's a problem with the so-called American Negro. There's a problem in your mind. You tend to hear lies and call that truth. Mm -hmm. But then when you hear the truth, you call that lies. Watch this. Isaiah 5 verse 20. Woe unto them that call evil good. Woe unto them that call evil good. For example, you call the white image of Jesus good. With him, with no scriptural proof, you say that's a good, good thing, okay? You call being on the bottom good, as long as the white man is in authority. You say that's good. When your families are dysfunctional, many of you say that's good, but it's not good. Okay, read it again. Woe unto them that call evil good, and good evil. And evil, and, and what that bottom part again? And good evil. You call good evil. We get phone, we've gotten some phone calls. Oh, I need to talk to you. Some of your lying preachers call me. I, I need to talk to you. You affecting my pockets, brother. That's right. That's you right. niggas talking about <laughs> you evil ministers out there. Okay, watch this. Go to Amos 5. Amos 5. Amos chapter 5, verse 10. See, your rhetoric phone calls mean nothing. If you ain't coming out to scriptures, we don't want to hear from you. Amos 5, verse 10. Amos 5, verse 10. They hate him that rebuketh in the gate. We rebuke in the gate because the Most High set up judges and leaders. Read it again. They hate him that rebuketh in the gate. Those that rebuke with the law, statutes, and commandments, you so-called Negroes tend to hate, especially your ministers. Go ahead. And they abhor him that speaketh uprightly. And they abhor him that what? That speaketh uprightly. We, try, we speak uprightly according to the laws, according to the Bible, and you abhor us. You hate us. You say, oh, they're racist. <laughs> this is some madness. Now, let's find out about the history because it, it, our people have gone through so much. Let's find out historically the origin of the so-called white man, okay? Brothers and sisters, we're going to go through the biblical proof. Don't misunderstand truth for hatred or racism. Right. We bring out the truth. We're not saying go out there and shoot nobody, curse your boss. Out there. That's not coming out of our mouth. Christ said you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Free in your mind, first and foremost. Free in your spirit. Then, and finally, free from captivity. From there, let's go to uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Let's open up with a little bit on color, color first. Right. Before we get to Jacob and Esau, I'm going to show you some color in the Bible. Because, for you know what they say, oh, I think the, maybe the people was in the, in the Bible with brown people because of, of the geological location. No. Genesis 2, verse 7. Let's start with Adam. Genesis 2, verse 7. The Lord God formed man. Uh, of the dust of the ground. Read it again. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. What color is the dust of the ground? Is the dust of the ground red? Is the dust of the ground blue? No! The dust of the ground is referring to the earth. The deeper you dig in the earth, the darker the dust gets. The darker the soil gets. So what was that? That's right, a black man. Now go to Job 30 and 30. I'm going to show you why we use the King James Bible. Because many of your new convoluting, I don't know if that's right. a word, but these new Bibles you're getting, that the white man is manipulating words in it, they're taking words out. Watch what our brother Job, the prophet Job, chapter 30, verse 30 says. Job 30, verse 30. My skin 
is black upon me. See, like Good News Bible, New Internet, take that, take that word black out. Mm -hmm. Because these people are starting to wake up. So they put in, oh, he's, he's, swarthy. he's swarthy. <laughs> they, oh, swarthy? <laughs> Swar what is that? So read that again. My skin is black upon me. Now he says my skin. Oh, you go, oh, oh. oh. For those of you that hate yourselves and hate your people, you go, that ain't really talking about color, brother. It's talking about condition. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go with the condition thing just for a moment. Why do they call you black? Is it because, okay, I got a black Bible right here. Mm -hmm. Is it because you're the color of this? My Abba, they call me black. Look at, look at my hand in contrast to the Bible. And for you high yellow blacks, why they call you black? Is it because you look like this or your condition? See, that word black is a metaphor. It's a metaphor used upon us, our people. So read it again. My skin is black upon me, and my bones are burned with heat. Now let's get Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 5, please. Song of Solomon, mm -hmm. chapter 1 and verse 5. King Solomon, let's see what he said about how he looked. Read verse 1 first. Song of Solomon. The Song of Songs, which is Solomon. Who wrote it? Which is Solomon's. Who wrote it? Which is Solomon's. Solomon wrote this. Verse 5, please. I am black, but comely. Oh, ye daughters of Jerusalem. Solomon said what? I am black, but comely. See there? So you got, and then you got these dumb, uneducated people that go, No! It was a black woman that wrote this. Oh, hold on. It's just, verse 1 told you. Right. Read it again. Uh, Song of Solomon, 1 verse 1. The Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. And if you too dumb... Let's go to Kings. First Kings, uh, First Kings, chapter four, verse thirty. Mm. And Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all, the, of all the children of the east country, and all the wisdom of Egypt. So Solomon was wiser than all the Egyptians. For you African Americans, go ahead. But he was wiser than all men, than Ethan, than Ezrathite, than Heman, than Shachol, and Dada, and the sons of Mahal. And his fame was in all nations round about. And he spake three thousand proverbs. And his songs were a thousand and five. His songs were what? And his songs were a thousand and five. And his songs were a thousand and five. Back to Song of Solomon, verse one. The Song of Songs, which is Solomon. Verse five. I am black, but come. So who wrote this? King Solomon said he's black. Okay? All you black women using Andy. I need to get Andy. I got to lighten my skin, you foolish group of people. Now, from there, let's get into some history about Jacob and Esau. Who is the so-called white man today? Mm -hmm. Let's find out according to Bible prophecy, according to biblical reference, not according to how I feel. See, that's one thing you're going to find out about us, brothers and sisters. We don't go on emotion. We don't go about how we feel or what we think. We're going to come out the Bible. Uh, let's go to Genesis, please. Genesis chapter 25. Now, let's start at verse 19 about Jacob and Esau. The book of Genesis, chapter 25, verse 19. Mm -hmm. And these are the generations of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham begat Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah to wife, mm -hmm. the daughter of Bethuel, the Syrian of Pan Panoram, the sister to Laban, the Syrian. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. So Isaac wanted to have a child. He wanted his wife to have a child. Come on. And the Lord was entreated of him. And Rebecca, his wife, conceived. Meaning she got pregnant. Rebecca got pregnant. Uh oh. And the children struggled together within her. And the children, plural, the children struggled together within her. Go ahead. And she said, If it be so, why am I thus? If God has blessed me, she asked, then why am I having this trouble in this in my belly here? Come on. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb. Uh oh. I want you to pay close attention. Remember those children that was struggling in her womb? It says two nations. What does this mean? That Genesis, what does the word Genesis mean? It means beginning. In Genesis 25, this is the beginning of two nations upon the earth. This is the beginning here. Read it again. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated. And two manner of people, meaning two different types of of people. Read that part again, two manner. And two manner of people. I want you to understand that, two manner. It don't mean that they are identical. It says two manner of people. Two different types of people, come on. Shall be separated. Shall be what? Shall be separated. Say join together. Shall be separated from thy bowels. Go ahead. And the one people shall be stronger than the other. So one 
of these people that's going to come out of Rebecca is going to be stronger than the other people. Go ahead. And the elder shall serve the young. The elder child, meaning the firstborn child, is prophesied to be a slave to the younger child. Go ahead. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, meaning her nine months, behold, they were twins in her womb. Now, were they identical twins? No, because we read earlier, two manner of people shall be separated. So they are not identical, they're fraternal. Go ahead. And the first came out red. The first child what? Came out red. Now remember, it said the elder would serve the younger in the verse above. The elder child, meaning the firstborn child, is prophesied to be a slave to the younger one. Read it again. Verse 25. And the first came out red. The first came out what color? And the first came out red mm -hmm. all over like an hairy garment. So this first child came out red, meaning you, the blood was, it had red skin. The blood showed forth through its skin. Mm -mm -mm. Go ahead. All over like an hairy garment. Hairy baby. And they called his name Esau. This firstborn child was named Esau. Which means, wasted away is he. So, it said he came out red. Read the next verse. Verse 26. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel. And his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was three score years old when she bit. Wait, there's something. Something's going on. I want you to notice something. Do you notice it gave the color of the elder child, but it did not mention the color of the younger child, Jacob? Why didn't it mention Jacob's color? Because Jacob was the same color as his mother, his father, and all the people in the Bible. From Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, all the way up. Black. Black. Different shades of brown. But Esau, his older brother, was different. It said he came out red. Okay? Now, now when we're down south, what do, what do we tend to call white people down south? Rednecks. Why are we calling them rednecks? Because it ain't just their neck that gets red when they're in the sun. Their whole body, from the top of their head to the soles of their feet, get red. Okay? Read on. Verse 27. Mm-hmm. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man, dwelling in tents. Come on. And Isaac loved Esau, because he did eat of his venison. But Rebekah loved Jacob. So Isaac loved the elder boy because the inheritance supposedly is supposed to go to the elder boy. But it said, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Rebekah, as you read on, she understood what the Lord had prophesied already. Come on. And Jacob sighed pottage. And Esau came from the field. And he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I'm faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage. Meaning that same red pottage that you got in that plate, that bowl right there. It says, because it looked like him. With that same red pottage. And it said, therefore his name was called what? Therefore was his name called Edom. Man, i Je Ne sara nete na ke lude nche folo yo. Ni bo de fe. Ota. Mo go fwe de to kura ina. Ika so na ji do dia. 
ਇਹ ਦਾ ਲਿਖਾ ਫੋਰ ਹੈ ਕਾਲੀ ਕਾਲੀ ਮਲਾਇਰਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਾਲੀ ਕਾਲੀ ਨਾ ਨਾ ਉਹ ਕੋਰੇ ਚੇ ਹੀ ਕਾਲੀ ਆਕੋ ਨੇ ਇਸਾਉ ਇਸਾ ਕਦੀ ਇਬਰਾਹਿਮ ਨੇ ਨੂੰ ਮੋਦੇ ਨੇ ਕਾਲੀ ਮੰਗਲਾ ਲਾ ਕਾਫੋਮਿੰਗ ਕੋਰੇ ਆ ਫਲੇ ਇਕਾਸ਼ੋ ਨਾ ਜੀਲਾ we're going to look up this word edom e d o m okay let's uh, get a bible dictionary for it. look that up for me edom let's find out about edom okay we got the zondervan bible dictionary i'm, I'm going to put it up on the screen for you okay i want you to notice something about edom okay okay go ahead edom what page are you on i'm on page 141 go ahead edom edomites the nation and its people who were the descendants of Esau he is found in the country so his name is equated with Edom Genesis 25:30 and 36 did it tell you what it means Edom yeah you didn't read this part the first part Edom Edomites oh, red right Edom Edomites red right they're telling you what it means okay then it tells you what the nation and its people who were the descendants of Esau now jump to the last paragraph of that meaning turn the page right Last paragraph. Listen good. Edom figures prominently in the prophetic scriptures as the scene of great future judgment. Great future judgment. Now the scholars put this together. You black should not scholars, so you just sit back and listen. Go ahead. See notably Isaiah 34 and 5, 6, 63 and 1. She is the only neighbor of the Israelites who was not given any promise of mercy from God. Oh, wait, wait, wait. The, the Edomites is the what? who was not given any promise of mercy from God. So John 3:16 is out the window, right? Dear? John 3:16, you don't even understand that verse. We're going to deal with that later on, not on this episode, right. on this show, but later. This book Redheads, right. okay, by Joel Meyerwitz, mm -hmm. okay? They show you I want you to see something. I'm going to turn to the back of this page. Here's a they call him Redheads. His hair is red. Now we call him white people, but what color is his t-shirt? His t-shirt is white. But what color is this? If his t-shirt is white, what color is his skin? Red! Red! The blood shows through their skin, brothers and sisters. Okay? Now I'm going to show you some more clips uh inside the book, but now let's get back. Where you at now? Genesis 27 verse 38. Go ahead. And Esau said unto his father, Has thou but one blessing my father because the father just said I gave the blessing to Jacob he tricked me go ahead bless me even me also o my father mm -hmm. and Esau lifted up his voice and wept Esau cried go ahead and Isaac his father answered and said unto him now I want you to listen good to this blessing upon Esau father of the Edomites behold thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth uh oh so what does this mean because right here They he the his he didn't have his dwelling was not the fatness of the earth so what does that mean Prophetically it means the Edomites would dwell the best places on earth they would cover the earth and conquer it's going to say that go ahead Come It on. says uh, behold thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth best places on earth and of the dew of the heaven from above the dew of heaven covers every place on earth meaning prophetically the Edomites would cover everywhere go ahead and by thy sword shall thou live we wanted to get that How would they live in the best places on earth? How would they cover the earth? And by thy sword shall thou live. Esau would conquer nation after nation after nation. Remember the characteristics of Esau, a cunning hunter. Isaac prophetically said what? And by thy sword shall thou live. Go ahead. We just read down to verse 30. Go ahead. Verse 40, right? That's what I'm reading. Right? Yeah, verse 40. I'm sorry. And shall serve thy brother and it shall come to pass and it sh thou shall serve thy brother and it shall come to pass when thou shall have the, have the, the dominion that thou shall break his yoke from off thy neck that happened in second kings chapter 8 verse 20 to 22 you can read that on your own it tells you that the edomites revolted under a king named jeroham okay and they they bolted out and set up their own king was that it yes sir okay now from there Let's go to 1 Maccabees chapter 1. I'm going to show you something real heavy. But you know what? 
before I before I want you to get first Maccabees mm -hmm. because you got Jehovah wicked lying Jehovah Witnesses. Mm -hmm. uh, we've met many of their leaders. They say the Edomites was destroyed by King Saul. When you read in the book of Samuel, King Saul only killed, destroyed one city of the Edomites. And he didn't even kill all of them. Okay? So were they all destroyed? No. Who are the Edomites? I'm going to show you something. I'm going to go to this book right here. Mm -hmm. Show you more scholarly proof. Picture history of Jewish civilization. Okay? I'm going to go to page 94. And I want you to read this for us, brother. Uh, I have it highlighted in pink. Right. It says this. Lord of the universe, is it not enough for your sons what the evil kingdom of Edom Rome. Edom what? Rome. Edom what? Rome. The scholars are letting you know that Rome was Edomites. Ancient Rome was Edomites. Read it again. For your, uh, the Lord of the universe, is it not enough for your sons what the evil kingdom of Edom, Rome, did to them? And you must also send the kingdom of Ishmael against yeah. us. The Ishmaelites are the Arabs. Jump down. Now it says this. And there will be a great hatred between them and the children of Esau, Rome. Now, there will be a great hatred between who? Between them and the children of Esau. Between the Israelites and the who? And the children of Esau, Rome. And the children of Esau, Rome. See, you've been reading the book of Matthew not realizing who the Roman Empire was all that time. They are the kingdom of Edom. Okay, that was it. Mm -hmm. That was it. Now, you know why I wanted to go there? Because it's a segue to the book of Maccabees. Because Alexander the Greek was the first Edomite. Okay, oh, oh, oh you might, some of you might be cunning and think you're smart and go, <laughs> but the Greeks came from Japheth. Didn't Isaac tell Esau, and by thy sword thou shalt live? Meaning the Edomites would conquer everybody. They conquered Japheth's son, Javan, which became known as Greece. Okay? Now, 1 Maccabees chapter 1, we want verse 1 and 2, then we're going to jump down. 1 Maccabees chapter 1, verse 1. And it happened after that Alexander, son of Philip, the Macedonian, who came out of the land of Chetan. Now this might be too heavy for some of you Negroes, because for years you've been so miseducated in your church system that's been set up by your slave masters that this, what is this? Might, might sound foreign to you. Right. Read it again. And it happened after that Alexander, son of Philip, the Macedonian who came out of the land of Chetan had smitten Darius, king of the Persians and Medes. Keep reading. Keep going. That he reigned in his stead the first over Greece. Because Alexander was the first king over Greece. He was the first Edomite king that had unified and rallied all the Edomites together. That's why the Apocrypha had to be taken out the Bible. Because what do they teach us in school? Civilization started with who do they teach? <laughs> the Greeks. But we're going to see what God says. Keep going. Verse 2. And made many wars and won many strongholds and slew the kings of the earth. Alexander did what? Slew the kings of the earth. What did Isaac tell Esau? Mm -hmm. By thy sword thou shalt live. That they should dwell in the fatness of the earth. The best places. Right. And they should cover the earth as the dew. Keep going. Verse 3. And went through to the ends of the earth and took spoils of many nations. Many who? Many nations. Mm. Insomuch that the earth was quiet before him. Alexander killed and slaughtered all the dark nations. Was that it on that? Whereupon he was exalted and his heart was lifted up. What verse was that? Verse 3. That was verse 3. Jump down. I just want to get to the point. Mm -hmm. Jump down to verse 7 to 9. So Alexander reigned 12 years and then died. Alexander the Great ruled 12 years and then died. Go ahead. And his servants bear rule everyone in his place. He had four major generals. Come on. And after his death, they all put crowns upon themselves. So did their sons after them many years. Watch this. And evils were multiplied in the earth. What happened when a white man came in power? And evils were multiplied in the earth. What happened when the Edomites came in power? And evils were multiplied in the earth. You see why they had to remove the Apocrypha from the Holy Bible? Because they could never teach us. Civilization started with the Greeks as long as that was in the Bible. Because we'd be going, wait a minute, wait a minute. 
What you talking about civilization? God says evils were multiplied in the earth when you came in power. The so-called white man, the Edomites, which are really red. Hmm? So this had to be removed from the Bible. Okay, from there, let's go to Ezekiel mm -hmm. chapter 36 and verse 5. I'm going to show you something about the Edomites. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 5. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen, and against all Idumia. Uh oh, that word Idumia, that might throw you off there. Let's go back to the Bible dictionary now. Mm -hmm. Because scholars like to be slick in the use of words. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, uh, mm -hmm. spell Idumia, I, D, U. I, D, U, M, E, A. M -A. Okay, bear with me a second. Let me find it. Got uh, I, D, U. Hmm. It's right there. Idumia. Pertaining to Edom. Idumia what? Pertaining to Edom. Uh -huh. Greek and Roman name for Edom. Idumia is a Greek and Roman name for Edom. So now back to Ezekiel 36 verse 5 again. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, surely... In the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen mm. and against all I do me. What did I do me do? Which have appointed my land into their possession. Well, I do me did what? Which have appointed my land into their possession. Prophetically, when did the Edomites take the land of God? The land of God is Israel, by the way, in case you didn't know. I know we need got to take them in baby steps. Right, right. Read it again, so we're going to go through it slow. From the top. Mm -hmm. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen mm -hmm. and against all I do me. Which is the Edomites. Go ahead. Which have appointed my land into their possession. 1948. Sound familiar? Israel was declared a state by the Jewish occupants. I'm going to say it again. 1948, the land of Israel was declared a state by its Jewish, J-E-W-I-S-H. What does I-S-H mean? It means pertaining to, not the original, but pertaining to. I want you to understand that. Read it again. Which, uh, from the top. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God. Surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumia, which have appointed my land into their possession. So Idumia took the land. Go ahead. With the joy of all their heart. With the joy of all their heart. With the spiteful minds. They had the sp Why does it say with the spiteful minds? Because when they took the land of Israel, did they take it and say they are Edomites? <laughs> no, they did not. Hold that. Revelation 2 verse 9, please. Mm -hmm. Now, I need you, brothers and sisters, just sit back, hold on to your Bibles, your pens, your papers. You should be recording this. Listen to what Christ said. Revelation 2, verse 9. I know thy works and tribulation. So Christ said to the real Israelites, the true Israelites, I know your works and your tribulations. And poverty. And I know your poverty. But thou art rich. Because all the promises in the Bible is for you true Israelites. Those of you whose fathers are of Negro and Indian descent. Come on. And I know the blasphemy. Oh, no, no, no. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews. Of them which say they are Jews. And are not. And are what? And are not. Ooh. Go ahead. But are the synagogue of Satan. Ooh. 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 Who are they? But are the synagogue of of Satan. See now, you'll be quick to show hatred. We're reading the Bible. Word for word. Word for word. So now, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That means. <laughs> now, <laughs> you're breathing heavy. That's what Christ said. If you say you believe and love on the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to accept these words. You're going to teach these words. Read it again. Revelation 2, verse 9. I know thy works in tribulation and poverty. But thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews. And are not. But are the synagogue of Satan. Let's get some history on that. Go to Luke chapter 1 please. Mm -hmm. Luke chapter 1 verse 5. Because there was a man named Herod. Hmm, hmm. Let's look at it. Read that about Luke 1 and 5 please. Luke chapter 1 verse 5. 
<laughs> there was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea. The king of what? Of Judea. Someone said Herod was the king of Judea. Judea is the Greek word for Judah. Herod, the king of Judah. Hmm. Because according to the Bible, when you read the history, the Israelites no longer had a king. After the kingdom was split and after the Assyrian Babylonian conquest, the kings of Israel were no more. So what's happening? How was Herod the king of Judea? Let's look up Herod, please. Bear with me a second. Spell Herod for me. H-E-R-O-D. H-E-R-O-D. Okay, bear with me a second. Okay, here we go. I want you to read this right here. Herod. Look under Herod. Just read this first part. Herod. Idumean rulers of Palestine. Oh, 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 Herod what? Idumean rulers of Palestine. So Herod was an Edomite. He wasn't... Ooh, maybe you forgot who the Edomites are. <laughs> Herod was an Edomite. Herod was an Edomite. Now, uh, Revelation 2.9 again, please. Oh, Revelation 2.9. So we can uh, uh, get some understanding. So you don't want Luke 1. We just read it. Okay, uh, okay, let's go back to right. Revelation 2 9. No, get me chapter 3, verse 9, so that they know Christ said it more than once, exactly. in case you're hard of hearing, slow of understanding. Revelation 3, verse 9. Mm -hmm. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan. Who was the synagogue of Satan? He's going to explain it. Which say they are Jews and are not. Uh oh, so who was that? Herod. You had King Agrippa. You had his sister Bernice. You had many Herodians, okay? Many Herods. They took the land. Christ said, I know the blasphemy of those that say they are Jews, but are not. Go ahead. But do lie. But do what? But do lie. I need you who did. <laughs> but what? But do lie. Go ahead. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet. You see how much Christ loves you? Christ said, I will make them come and worship before your feet. And to know. That I have loved thee. Christ is going to make all these heathen know that he has loved you true Israelites. Those whose fathers are of Negro and Indian descent. Okay? Now, I know what you might be thinking, some of you. Well, how, we, how can we be sure? I'm going to show you right now, according to the Bible, that all... First, let's go to uh, Luke 21, 24. Right. Because Christ says something about the land of Israel. Right. Luke chapter 21, verse 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. The real Israelites, the true 12 tribes of Israel, would fall by the edge of the sword. Who conquered us? Rome. And shall be led away captive into all nations. And we were made slaves in all nations. And Jerusalem. And Jerusalem, what about it? Shall be trotted down of the Gentiles. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down, meaning taken over by the Gentiles. Now, Ezekiel gave you the name of those Gentiles. Back to Ezekiel 36. Mm -hmm. Hold that. We're going to compare the two verses. Ezekiel 36 and Verse 5 again. Five. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumia. Idumia is the Greco-Roman word for Edom, which have appointed my land into their possession. Edom took the land. Back to Christ now, Luke 21, 24 again. Luke 21, verse 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. The real Israelites... And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations. Meaning made slaves in all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trotted down of the Gentiles. What's the name of those Gentiles that took our land? Idumia, Edomites, so you can understand. Go ahead. Until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Until their time of rulership is finished. Okay? So now, from there, let's go to Obadiah. Obadiah, one of the smallest books in the Bible, but one of the most powerful. <laughs> Sit back, fix your wig, black woman. Watch this, because when we go through this, the prophecies are going to unfold itself, so it's going to erase all doubts in your mind. Obadiah, verse 1. Obadiah, verse 1. The vision of Obadiah, thus saith the Lord God. Now, thus saith who? The Lord God. We want to establish that it's God speaking here. Go concerning ahead. Edom. Concerning who? Edom. In case you forgot, bear with me a second. Concerning Edom. Okay. Go ahead. We have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador sent 
among the heathen. An ambassador, this is prophetic, is sent among the heathen. Come on. Arise ye and let us rise up against her in battle. So now, the prophecy is an ambassador shall go amongst the heathen and they're going to come against Idumia, come against Edom. We're going to see who the headquarters of Edom is in this verse here as we read on. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. The Edomites are not liked, God says, amongst the heathen. That's what it means when it says made small. Go ahead. Thou art greatly despised. He explains it more. Thou art greatly despised. Go ahead. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. So the Edomites are a proud people. Okay. It's, that's it. God is going to give you clues, characteristics to identify. Number one, we already know mm -hmm. they're red. The blood shows through their skin, like Genesis 25, 25 explained. Right. Genesis 27 said they would rule by the sword. So they would conquer everybody, okay? Now it says they are proud people. Mm. Go ahead. The pride of thine heart have deceived thee. Thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock. Hold on right there. Thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock. What does the word Caucasian mean? It means cave dweller. Where does that word Caucasian mean? come from? It comes from the Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia. That's the name they gave themselves after the Dark Ages, okay? Caucasian. But during the time of uh, Genesis, it tells you they dwelt in the clefts of Mount Seir, S-E-I-R, which means hair, okay? Read it again. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. Thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, mm -hmm. whose habitation is high. It lets you know that the Edomites like to live in high places, like skyscrapers. It reminds them of the caves. It reminds them of the Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia. It reminds them of the caves of Mount Seir. Come on. That saith in his heart. Now listen to what their pride says. Who shall bring me down to the ground? Now in order to say that what you got to have, what does a nation have to say to say who shall bring me down? They must have power. They remember that blessing they were given to dwell by the sword. Right. Okay, meaning war. What nation on the earth filled with pride is red, likes to live in skyscrapers, has the power, the arsenal to say, who can take me? Who can conquer me? The so-called white man, mainly the United States of America. They have the nuclear power to ask that question. Who can take me down? Who can bring me down to the ground? Come on. Verse 4. Hey, watch this. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle. Ooh, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. What the what? Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle. What is the symbol of the United States of America? In case you're that ignorant, take out a $1 bill. Look on the back of the $1 bill. What's the national emblem? The eagle. The eagle. The eagle. Uh-oh. When Alexander the Greek conquered, what was the symbol of the Greeks? The eagle, the eagle, the eagle. Oh, during the time of Christ, when Rome came in power, what was the symbol of Rome? The eagle, the eagle, the eagle. Uh-oh, when France came in power, what was the symbol of France? The eagle, the eagle. Oh, what about Germany? The eagle. What about Russia? The eagle. What about Britain? The eagle. The United States of America. The eagle. Read that part again. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, mm -hmm. and though thou set thy nest among the stars. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Though thou what? And though thou set thy nest among the stars. Who's doing space travel? Who is setting their nest among the stars? Let's think back. <laughs> Let's think back. 1969. Eagle, Houston, we, Houston, we see you on a stair, over. Roger, Eagle, I'm Doc. Roger, how does it look? Eagle has wings. Roger. Six forward. Sixty seconds. Lights on. Forward. Forward. Forty feet down, two and a half. Picking up some dust. Face shadow. Four forward, drifting to the right a little. Thirty seconds. Forward. Just... Contact light. Okay, engine stop. We copy it down, Eagle. Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. When they landed on the moon, they gave a famous outcry. They said, The Eagle has landed! 
and try to make mockery of the prophecy because they know the prophecy, okay? But you so-called blacks and Latinos, you Israelites, you've, you've been so uh, deceived here in this kingdom. Mm -hmm. Read it again. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars. Though thou set thy nest amongst the stars. They landed on the moon in 1969 and said the eagle has landed. They've been doing space travel. They've been going to different stars year after year, month after month. Thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. The Lord said he's going to bring them down. When you land up there, that's what he said, I'm going to start bringing you down. These prophecies started really coming out. And there's no stopping this truth. That's right. Okay? No stopping it. From there, let's go to the book. Uh, no, 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 no. You know what? Jump down. Stay right there and jump down to verse 21. I'm going to show you something. Prophetically, after Esau. Esau. Go ahead. Obadiah, verse 21. This is the last. Is that the last verse? And saviors shall come up on Mount Zion. To judge the mount of Esau. Now, after this, the saviors is making reference to is the 144,000 that Revelation 7 speaks on. Read it again. And saviors shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the mount of Esau. How are they judging you? Teaching the word of the Most High. And they're going to get judged because the scriptures tell you they're going to get destroyed. Esau. Go ahead. And the kingdom shall be the Lord's. After Esau what? And the kingdom shall be the Lord's. Read the verse again. And saviors shall come up on Mount Zion. To judge the mount of Esau, and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. So after Esau, the Bible says the kingdom shall be the Lord's. That's right. This is the last kingdom, brothers and sisters. This is the last of the uh, heathen Gentile empires. Okay? Let's go to Ezra now. Right. Second Ezra. I'm going to prove that statement. Second Ezra chapter 6, verse 9. Mm -hmm. Second Ezra chapter 6, verse 9. In the Apocrypha, the book that was removed from the King James Bible. For Esau is the end of the world. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Read the verse above it. Start at 8. Verse 8. Start and at seven. 7. Right. Then answered I and said, what shall be the parting asunder of the times? What shall be the parting asunder of the times? Or when shall be the end of the first? What shall be the, when shall be the end of the first? And the beginning of it that followeth. When is the new kingdom of Israel going to be established? And he said unto, listen to the answer. From Abraham unto Isaac. Unto Isaac. Remember we started there. When Jacob and Esau were born of him. When Jacob and Esau was born of him. Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. Remember in Genesis 25. It's, let me get it. Let me get Genesis 20. We're going to compare. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read it. Bear with me a second. Genesis 25. Mm -hmm, got my glasses, but I'm going to read it. Genesis 25 and verse 25. No, let me read above it. it says, I'll start at 23. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb, and the first came out red all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel. And Esau's, and, and his name, excuse me, and his name was called Jacob. Now read that again. Verse 8. And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. They were fighting in the womb. Go ahead. For Esau is the end of the world. Esau is the last ruling empire. Read it again. For Esau is the end of the world. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. After Esau goes down, it's your time to rule, brothers and sisters, with Christ. Okay. Right. Because some of you might think the Chinese are next in line. Right. All right. You might think another nation is going to rise up. But the Most High is doing right before the eyes of everyone on the earth is raising up his people. All right? Whether you hear this, uh, brothers and sisters, or whether you don't believe this, it's going to go, it's going to happen. Because the Bible says the scripture shall not be broken. That's right. From there, let's go to the book of Malachi. Last book of the Old Testament. Oh, oh, don't think we forgot about the New Testament. <laughs> because some of them like, oh, see, they always stay in the old. No, we don't. 
you got to read the whole Bible together. Malachi chapter 1, verse 1. Let's start. We're going to read down to 4. All right. Malachi 1, verse 1. <clears throat> the burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet you say, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord? Yet I loved Jacob. So the Lord is telling us, wasn't Jacob and Esau brothers? <laughs> but I loved Jacob. Go ahead. And I hated Esau. Oh, God don't hate. And I hated Esau. So what happens with John 3.16 again? And I hated Esau. You don't understand John 3.16, obviously. Go ahead. And laid his mountains and his heritage waste. And laid his mountains and his heritage waste. When did the Edomites fall historically in the past? 193 AD by the hands of Septimius Severus. The pagan Roman Empire fell. Watch this. Go ahead. And I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste. Because when they fell, it became known as the Dark Ages. Go ahead. For the dragons of the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Whereas Edom said. Now they were in the Caucasus Mountains during the Dark Ages. Go ahead. We are impoverished. Read again. Where's Edom? Where, whereas Edom said. What did the Edomites say? Whereas Edom said, we are impoverished. But we will return and build the desolate places. But we will return and build the desolate places. What's that talking about? Mm -hmm. The Renaissance. The Renaissance. The Renaissance era. That's when they came back in power in 1453. They sacked Constantinople. They got Rome. They got Spain. They conquered everybody after that. Read that again. Whereas Edom said, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. Listen good to this. They shall build. Yeah, the Edomites will build from the Renaissance on. But I will throw down. But God will throw down because Christ is soon to return. Come on. And they shall call them. They shall, what are we going to call the Edomites? The border of wickedness. The border of wickedness. And the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. God has indignation meaning great hate for how long? For Ever. No, 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 my Jesus, no, my God, no, not the Bible, read it again. The border of wickedness and the people against whom the Lord have indignation forever. Oh, I know what the church minister saying now, mm -hmm. but in the New Testament, <laughs> God changed his mind, my brother. You lying bunch of preachers. Go to Romans 9, please. Right. Romans 9, because the apostle Paul repeated what God said. Romans 9. Romans 9. Let's start at verse 7. Romans 9, verse 7. Because you know what I'm going to start? I don't know how much time we got, but they like to say everybody is the children of God. Mm -hmm. is, that all, is all nations the children of God? <laughs> Romans 9, verse 7. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham. Because Abraham had many children, even by the woman named Keturah. Right. Go ahead. Are they all children? Are they all? They're not all the children of God just because they come from Abraham. Go ahead. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. The seed that was chosen and called by God was the child that Isaac had, Israel, Jacob. Go ahead. That is they which are the children of the flesh. Meaning the other nations, Esau, the other nations. They which are the children of the flesh. These are not the children of God. What the other nations what? These are not. The children of God. So your ministers are a bunch of liars. Now what verse was that? Verse 8. Go ahead. But the children of the promise are counted for the seed. Who are the children of the promise? Jump up to verse 9. I mean verse 4 for us. Please just read that quick. Who are Israelites? Mm. To whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. And the promises. Who are Israelites? Now jump down to verse 10. Verse 10. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one. But when Rebekah also had conceived by one. Even by our father Isaac. By our father Isaac. Who's writing this? Paul. For the children, being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil. So the children didn't do no good or evil. Talking about Esau and Jacob. That the purpose of God according to the election might stand, not of works. But of him that called. So it had nothing to do with what Esau did or what Jacob did. Right. God called him from the womb. Who, who was going to play what role? Go ahead. It was said unto her, The elder shall serve the younger. Mm. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. That's in the New Testament. Romans 9, verse 13. Here again. As it is written, 
Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. So God don't change, brothers and sisters. <laughs> See, now this might be a, a hard lesson for y'all to swallow. Hebrews 12 and 16, please. Hebrews 12. We're going to go back to Romans 9. Actually, how far did you get down to? Uh, I got down to verse 13. Okay. Go to Hebrews 12, 16. Then we're going to go back there again. All right. Hebrews 12, verse 16. I six. want you to listen good to this. Hebrews 12, verse 16. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau. See, the apostle Paul always reminded you about Esau. Why? Who was wrong? Rome was ruling. Who was wrong? Edom. The kingdom of Edom. Read it again. Lest there be any fornicator mm -hmm. or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. Mm -hmm. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. God rejected him. For he found no place of repentance. There's no place of repentance. I'm going to say it again. There's no place of repentance for Esau. For Edom, read that again. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. Though Esau sought repentance carefully with tears, God rejected him. So that, that shows you, you don't understand John 3.16. Mm. Because there's no repentance for Esau. There's no repentance for Edom. Now back to Romans 9, please. Okay, we're almost done here. Romans 9. And, and let's start at verse 10 again. Romans 9, verse 10. Mm -hmm. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil. It had nothing to do with their works. God chose that. Go ahead. That the purpose of God, according to election, might stand. God's election stands. Come on. Not of works. Not of works. But of him that called. But of God that called. It was said unto her. The elder shall serve the young. That was a prophecy. As it is written. As it is written. Where in Genesis 25? Go ahead. Jacob have I loved, mm -hmm. but Esau have I hated. And we, right. And then we read that in Malachi chapter 1. Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. So Paul is constantly reminding you in the New Testament, don't be deceived, brothers. Don't get tricked. But you've all been deceived. Come on. Verse 15. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. So now, Paul don't want you to get it twisted. Mm -hmm. He's reminding you about something that God told Moses. I will have mercy on whom I have, will have mercy. Go ahead. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. He's saying that to remind you that he's chosen the Israelites. Regardless that you broke all the commandments of God. Yeah. Regardless that you were slavery. He's still choosing you as his chosen people. Come on. So, All because of the glory and sacrifice of Christ. Come on. So then, so then it is not of him that will it. Regardless of the Edomites, <laughs> they will to be God's people. They set themselves up as Jesus. They set themselves up as God. They build churches all across the land. Nor of him that runneth. It ain't of him that runneth. Come on. But of God that showeth mercy. It's all based on God's mercy. Go ahead. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, mm. even for the same purpose, have I raised thee up that I might show my power in thee. No, wait, wait, wait. You know what you got to think about? He's talking about Jacob and Esau. Then he jumps to Pharaoh. Why did he go from Jacob and Esau to Pharaoh? Who was ruling at the time, brothers and sisters? Rome was the empire on the earth. Rome. He's comparing Rome to Pharaoh. Come on. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for the same purpose have I raised thee up. So God raised up the Edomites to have power on the earth. Why? Don't forget the prophecy in Genesis 27. What did Isaac say? By your sword you shall rule. Go ahead. That I might show my power in thee. God's raising up the, he's raised up the Edomites that he might show his power. Go ahead. And that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Because just like when the Lord took down Pharaoh in ancient Egypt, his name was declared throughout all the earth because nobody could take down ancient Egypt. So likewise, who's the power on the earth? The United States of America. They are an extension of ancient Rome. They have the nuclear capabilities. They are able to travel space, split atoms. God says, even for the same purpose have I raised you up, that I might show my power. And to read from there that part again. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for the same purpose, have I raised thee up, 
that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Because when God takes down this place, his name's going to be declared throughout all the earth. Because can anybody take down America? No! This is the superpower. Go ahead. Therefore, have he, have he mercy on whom he will have mercy. So God's choosing you Israelites. Wait, hold that. Isaiah 14, please. Isaiah 14. 14 verse 1. So you all understand. <laughs> because the prophecy is already there. Okay. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel. Let's go back now. Where you left off. Therefore hath he, hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy. Mm -hmm. And whom he will, he hardened. Because God has hardened the hearts of America. God has hardened the hearts of the Edomites. That's what he's letting you know. That's what Paul is letting you know. He's comparing Pharaoh of Egypt to Rome, the United States of America. Also called Babylon the Great. Come on. Thou will say that unto me. Why does he yet find fault? Then you're going to, who are you going to say, yet? why does God <laughs> find fault? Go ahead. For who hath resisted his will? No one can resist the will of God. Nay, but, O oh man, who art thou that replies against God? And who are you? Because the Negroes quick to always say, what about the white mm -hmm. man? What about master? Go ahead. Nay, but, O oh man, who art thou that thou replies against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, why hast thou made me thus? Right, because who does that? When you go to school, what do the Edomites teach our children in school? The ev evolution. There is no God. They say foolish things like that. Come on. Have not the potter power over the clay? God has power over the clay. He's the potter. We are the clay. Of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor? Who did God make to honor? The Israelites, the 12 tribes of Israelite, of Israel. And Christ, the king, came from the tribe of Judah. Go ahead. And another unto dishonor. Who's the vessel to dishonor? Esau, the Edomites. Read verse 9, 13 again. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Esau is the vessel to dishonor. Back to where you left off. Verse 22. Go ahead. What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to the structure? So Esau is the vessels of what? The vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. Fitted to destruction means created to be destroyed. Have you forgotten the Bible dictionary? Oh, maybe you did. Mm -hmm. Let me get it. Now, hopefully time, we looked up Edom at the beginning of the show. Right. Okay, E-D-O-M. Can you, I want the last paragraph of right. Edom. Yeah. Okay. The so last, last paragraph, paragraph on the definition of Edom. Edom figures prominently in the prophetic scriptures as the scene of great future judgment. Future judgment. She is the only neighbor of the Israelites who was not given any promise of mercy from God. See what the scholars know, but you've not learned this in your churches. Though it's time for you brothers and sisters to come out of those churches. Come out and return to your tribes. Come out, repent of your sins and repent as the Israelites because time is short. Brothers and sisters, and we don't know how much longer we'll be allowed to keep this program on the air. So with your donations, please help us to keep this truth going. Because like I said, you're not going to hear this in your churches on Sunday. Okay? Brothers and sisters, with that, we say shalom. Shalom.